welcome to Hope and Recovery Podcast. I'm Alison Summers and my guest today is the Chief Exec of Kenwood Trust, which is one of the UK's leading drug and alcohol services, situated in the heart of Kent. This year, Kenwood Trust is celebrating 55 years of service to the community, bringing hope to people that want to start their journey in recovery and be free from addiction. In this interview, I'm going to be finding out more about the work of Kenwood Trust and the people that find themselves in need of their service. So it's my pleasure to welcome to the show, Penny Williams. Hello, Alison. Hello, welcome, welcome. So tell us about Kenwood Trust. Um, what is Kenwood Trust? So Kenwood Trust is a charity based in Yalding. Um, the core of the business is a rehab centre, so that's a residential rehab centre for those that are addicted to drugs and alcohol. But we've also got uh, several move-on properties. So once people have been with us, say, 12 weeks, if they're homeless, then they continue their journey of recovery in our uh, move-on properties as well. And that's where really Kenwood Trust started, with the rehab? Yes, um, it started 55 years ago. We're, we're celebrating 55 years of um, saving people's lives this year. The Sindon family, Mr Sindon, set up the charity uh, in this um, Georgian uh, mansion house, 15 acres, to help and support those in London who were homeless and it very quickly became um, a drug and alcohol rehab centre and through his faith and connections with um, the church community the uh, organisation developed into having 38 properties across Kent um, through donations and purchasing so that uh, the work could be done and people could uh, access homes across Kent. What a vision of a person. It was, it was an amazing vision and we're very blessed to now have two of his daughters volunteering and one sits on our board of trustees which I think is uh, uh, a really nice um, recognition of the family's work and how it all started. So the core business is the rehab but there are other things as well that Kenwood Trust does that are actually on site as well. Yeah, so our, the property is quite large, uh, I'd say in 15 acres, and we have a couple of flats that we've utilised to help homeless who want to start their recovery journey, and uh, it gives them a safe place to start that process. Um, we also, uh, as, a, as the head office, we have other services that um, uh, work within the trust, um, supporting young people in schools, early intervention, intervention and also uh, in the community on the streets, uh, trying to educate young people in the dangers of drugs and alcohol. So if somebody was to actually need help from Kenwood and reach out for help, what that might that journey look like and be for them? The journey can be different um, and we're very person-centric in terms of our programmes, but um, each person can be potentially assessed uh, in hospital, uh, will be assessed by a GP, will reach out to the uh, various drug and alcohol uh, units in each local authority areas. Um, and then they may have detox in a residential setting or detox in the community. And that's really important because particularly detox in alcohol can be a very dangerous process and you need the support 24-7 mm. to go through that. Um, after which they can join Kenwood in um, residential rehab to work on the um, journey that they've had to bring them to the situation that they're in with addiction. Um, and those programmes can be, we have two different types of programmes, therapeutic programme and the 12 steps. Um, so each individual can find the right process for them to overcome their addictions. So it really is uh, tailor-made for each person as they come in through the doors? It is, yeah. yeah. And how has Kenwood can changed since you've been Chief Exec? Um, Kenwood has changed enormously and I suppose across the 55 years it's uh, been here it has changed enormously um, just as the world has but I think each chief exec has um, put their mark on the organisation. Um, Godfrey Featherstone 
was the chief exec some 20 years ago. He currently lives next door and is really supportive of the trust. And I think since I've been here um, as chief exec, which is just coming up for five years, he's been enormously supportive during that time. Um, so with the different funding um, in 2010, a lot of funding for the sector was stripped back. So the last 12 years have been very hard for the sector. And, um, certainly in the last five years, the number of rehabs in the UK has halved. So we are now in a, 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 another phase of investment, fortunately. Uh, Dame Carol Black did a report in 2021 and quite a significant amount of money has been allocated to the sector. So that has changed everything again. Uh, during the, the whole time, as you can imagine, running a, a property that uh, dates back to the 1400s uh, has its own challenges. And um, I think certainly what I've tried to do in the last five years, make all the accommodation more flexible. So fortunately, during the pandemic, we were able to create a quarantine area and we were still able to bring people into the project, which was really important. Um, and we are slowly repairing a lot of the years of um, uh, under investment to put the place back to its former glory. And I think we're starting to get there. It certainly is a lovely site with lovely gardens and the buildings are great. It really is. So if there was one myth that you would like to dispel about working in this sector or working with um, drug and alcohol services, um, the sales is Cambridge Trust, what would it be? I think when I first came here seven years ago um, to do marketing, what I found very quickly was perceptions of this sector um, were quite poor and in terms of donations and even grant giving, um, because it's a sector that was underinvested in and as a charity we were struggling, um, there were a lot of perceptions of uh, the people we were looking after weren't worth supporting. Um, I strongly believe that during the pandemic there's been a, a much greater understanding of what we do, um, of the fact that so many people from all walks of life can find themselves in a situation that means they start to drink, for example, um, self-medicate, uh, find ways to forget the things that are... Uh, concerning them and certainly in the last two years I think we've seen more and more people very sympathetic to what we do and much better understanding that it can affect um, people from all sorts of backgrounds. A lot of what we do is focused on trauma, um, particularly childhood trauma and those things can affect people and then the pressures that we've seen in the pandemic I think has accelerated that. Um, and demand for our services is the highest that it's been for many, many years. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a, a sector that uh, now, fortunately, is getting the investment that it needs. So I guess one of the questions that intrigues me is, is how did you begin your camera journey? How did it start for you? Um, so around seven years ago, I was invited by the chief exec at that time to come and um, do some marketing for the charity. I have to admit, I sort of fell in love with the place and the work and the people here and found it all incredible. Um, at that time, I had uh, many challenges in my personal life. And I think, as I just said about people having more understanding, I, I had a better understanding for the people that found themselves here needing treatment. So on that journey, um, I uh, the, the chief exec that was here uh, was uh, decided to move on and I applied for the job and, and got it because I really felt that I could make a difference here and um, I feel that there is a real purpose for me here. And you're still here. And I'm still here. <laughs> Does it feel like coming to work every day or does it feel different? Um, no, it's never felt. I, and I think I've been very fortunate throughout my career. I've loved everything that I've done. So it's it's never felt like work and I don't feel Kenwood does. Don't get me wrong, there's been some really challenging days running a charity, um, caring for people and um, having financial challenges from time to time is very stressful. But um, no, I have overall loved every moment. 
So if if um, if people wanted to kind of get involved somehow with Kenwood, is, is there opportunity for people to do that? Yeah, we as we're now coming out of the pandemic, we're looking for more companies to adopt us as their, their charity for um, people in uh, communities of interest to adopt us. Uh, many years ago, we had a, a golf club adopt us as their charity for the year, which was uh, a fantastic opportunity for us. And we raised just over £8,000, which is a lot of money for us. Um, we are always looking for volunteers to help in our... 15 acre gardens and um, it, we also, um, part of what the charity has done um, when I first joined, they refurbished part of the Georgian house as a cafe, um, but also a conference centre. So um, uh, the conference centre also can offer activities such as archery, disc golf, and we have our alpacas, which is what we're becoming known for now. So um, there's lots of ways people can help us, raise money for us, volunteer, visit our cafe and uh, come and walk our alpacas because all that income helps to support the charity. Lots to do. Indeed. So for you, this job is quite demanding. So for you, how do you unwind? How do you relax? Um, I like going on holidays. I've got a lot of family in America, so I do like going to there. I've got a friend in Madeira. Um, I have two dogs that I enjoy walking, um, swimming, and lots of friends. So that's how I switch off, really, is uh, I'm still a very busy person in my social life as well. Um, so that helps me switch off. But uh, it, it, I suppose running a charity... You don't get to walk away very much. It is 24-7. Um, but because I love what I do, that isn't a problem either. Sounds great. <laughs> so <clears throat> the I know the charity is known for the words hope, giving people hope in the future. And I know the government agenda has also got the word hope in it. And I was just wondering what, on a personal level, uh, that word hope means for you. Yeah, the government agenda is um, their position of all the investment they're making in the sector for the next few years is from harm to hope. And I feel hope is a really key word for us. Um, a lot of our residents feel they're not worthy. They're not um, worthy of, of recovery, but um, worthy to be here in some, some ways. Um, so I feel offering our residents the hope is key to what we do and helping them unlock their abilities. Um, I love our therapeutic workshops for that very reason. You see many people come here who then do some pottery or do some art and I've heard them say, I haven't done anything like this since I was at primary school and actually they're really good at it and it gives them such a self-worth and such confidence, which is all about what we try to do here. Whilst we, from a therapeutic point of view, we're helping people work through traumas and triggers and everything else, but a lot of it is rebuilding their confidence. And many of our residents will say they were reborn here. And I think that's true of this, uh, helping them recognize the wonderful qualities and skills that they have and giving them hope to continue their lives. And on a, on a personal note, what about hope for you? What if you had to put that in one word? What, what does that mean for you? Oh gosh, that's a really tough question. Um, I'm not very good at talking about myself. Um, <laughs> hope. So I had cancer seven years ago, and I think hope for me is uh, that I wake up every day and I survive. I think for many people that have had those sort of moments in their life where you feel it can be all taken away from you. Um, it's that uh, really enjoying and making the most of every day, which is what I do. So hope for me is that I get another 20 years. <laughs> Hence the busy life outside. Exactly. Here, to do the work every moment. moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to come to an end now with this interview, but thank you very much for joining My pleasure, us today. Alison, thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, if you want to be in touch with Kenwood House, uh, Kenwood Trust, in any way, shape or form, then please visit the website www.kenwoodtrust.org.uk 
or give us a call on 01622 814 187. I'm Alison Summers, thank you for joining us today. Thank you.